Myrtle Wilson brings us a post from Lindo Bacon. If you don't know the infamous Lindo Bacon, please check out the video by Keanu Doherty entitled The Toxic World of Tess Holiday and Fat Activism, Politics, Lies, and Health? Before watching Keanu Doherty's video, I disliked Lindo Bacon. After watching it, I loathed Lindo Bacon. Anyway, this is what Lindo had to say recently. Here are my thoughts on the recent study that claims to debunk the idea that you can be fat and healthy at the same time. Just a quick glance at this, because I'm tired of this poop. A recent study called Joint Association of Physical Activity and Body Mass Index with Cardiovascular Risk, Google the title if you want to see it for yourself, claimed that fat but fit is a myth. But they can't make that interpretation based on what the study actually did. That higher weight is associated with these risk factors is certainly not news. Of course fat people have worse health. How could they not considering how poorly they're treated? A more likely conclusion from their data is that exercise alone can't protect you from the effects of fat phobia. Repeat after me, association does not mean causality. This study did not control for weight stigma and discrimination, dieting. I jumped to the last line which really showed how far they are from reporting on data. However, weight loss per se should remain a primary target. They didn't examine anything but weight loss, yet that's the final advice they leave us with? But really, whether you can be fat and fit is the wrong question to be asking anyway. Let's stop situating the problem in fat bodies and look to structural issues, like treating fat people better and making fitness more accessible. Here's what I think, if Lindo Bacon really wanted to make a point. Lindo do the sugared study themselves. Lindo Bacon is a real doctor, right? Not just somebody who lives off telling people what they want to hear, right? Time to do the work, Lindo. South Holland also replied, How do you control for subjective variables like weight stigma and discrimination? Berries and me. It didn't need to. Weight stigma and discrimination goes away when you lose the weight. The recommendation holds true regardless of whether the problems are due to discrimination or physical effects. Right on, Berries. Right on. Although personally, I think Lindo's full of sugar and is more guided by what she wants to believe than facts. Love Dove Bunny brings us no such thing as sugar addiction. Ah! I just criticized an icon on Twitter and I'm somewhat apprehensive of the perspective feedback for it. Monkey covering eyes. George Takei had shared a video about food addiction, which apparently is a thing that roughly 19% of people in the study suffered from. Face slap. And I commented that there's no such thing as food addiction but that moralizing food contributes to eating disorders. So this is me running back to a safer corner of the internet to hide for a moment. Hugs. Edit. Apparently that he regularly shares fat phobic content was new only to me. Face slap. Oh well. First, nobody cares what you wrote on Twitter. Literally, nobody. Second, just because eating disorders exist doesn't mean that food addiction doesn't. All right, the next one's just a dumb joke. Forgive me if it offends. Bernie Sanders tweeted, Deer population is controlled by releasing wolves into an area. All problems should be solved this way. Too much pollution? Release wolves into the factories. Dislike Congress? Wolves. Want to lose weight? That's right. Wolves. <coughs> From one teen, apparently we are a naturally sedentary species? Since we always talking about what's natural and what's not, have we ever considered the idea that if I have to go to the gym for my body to look a certain way, then that's not how my body is naturally designed to look? Ancient matter. You know what else is natural? Being one of a family of ten, where half of your siblings didn't reach the age of five, and then you yourself succumb to an infection from a small cut at the age of 23. That was the peak of human experience. From YYC Chatterbox. No questions will be allowed, because I am highly sensitive to debate. Someone tweeted, The fact that we're getting a Cruella anti-hero movie before an Ursula anti-hero movie is fat phobia. I will not be taking further questions at this time. Cerberon replied, The fact that we're getting a Cruella origin anti-hero movie before a Captain Hook anti-hero movie is ableist and anglophobic. I will not be taking further questions at this time. Some of you are probably going to comment what I'm thinking. Isn't Captain Hook English? Anyway, from Emersoning. Maybe it's just me, but kind of weird that you asked the doctor's weight instead of their qualifications. Tell the nurse referral agent. You've got a few options for where we send your neurology referral. We have me. Do you have any doctors look like they weigh 210 pounds or more? Agent. Yes? Me. I'll take that one, please. 
I do not have the patience for more fat phobia. Primitive Force replied, Hmm, to be honest, I didn't know this was an option. Next time, I'm going to ask them if any of the doctors they refer out to are hot as sugar and ask for a HAS metric for each of Betrol and cocktails. I once went to an urgent care and was treated by an NP who looked exactly like Henry Rollins, who is exactly my type. He became my primary care from then on. Highly recommend a hot doctor. Tempesta Lunaire has the doctor asking, I'm worried about you. I've noticed that at each of your visits, your heartbeat is really quite elevated. Have you noticed that in your daily life? Viva Lafarce added, Good thing he's not my gyno. Which reminds me of an SNL skit, which probably has not aged well. But some of the older of you might remember. It was Mel Gibson, dream gynecologist. This was before all the various controversies he got involved in. From Thumbelina. I will never understand this idea that watching what you eat stops you from being able to do other things. I can count calories and still think and feel other things. Your brain on diets and restriction. Half your brain is filled with foods you shouldn't eat, and the other half your brain is filled with foods you're allowed to eat. Your brain on food freedom. One part of your brain, future goals, another work, another emotions, another sex, another hobbies, another relationships, another eating, and another other important stuff. As long as we're talking about brains, I feel like I must make a public service announcement. This is your brain. This is fat logic. This is your brain on fat logic. Any questions? From Better Days 89, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. I'm 350 pounds, definitely obese. Walk an hour every day, four miles. Can do 100 push-ups and sit-ups. Eat about 2,200 calories a day, give or take. Today was 1750 day. Before it was 2180. While I believe calories in equals calories out, my body is just able to work with less calories. In contrast, my wife eats the exact same thing walks with me about twice a week and weighs 110 pounds at 5 foot 7 inches. I would say fitness wise, I'm definitely healthier than her. South Holland replied, So let's give a very gracious benefit of the doubt. If this guy is 350 pounds and has the strength to do 100 push-ups and sit-ups, he basically has a similar level of fitness to an NFL lineman. So congratulations. You have a 50% greater chance than the general public of dying early from heart disease. <laughs> from Sullen Avalanche. Is there anything they won't blame on fat phobia? Friendly reminder that fat phobia is rooted in imperialist anti miscegenation. You know, I used to think I was well educated before I started reading tweets like these which creates cognitive dissonance that devalues colonized people while making them targets for sexual violence. Inside sympathy. Congratulations! <laughs> you found your thesaurus. Aya, ah, babe! Imagine getting annoyed that personal trainers are trying to make their clients lose weight. Shaking my head. Dear personal trainers, Stop trying to increase fat clients' mobility with weight loss, which almost never works, and start working on strength, stamina, flexibility, etc. in the body they have. Translated, here's 20 bucks. You have one hour to improve my body. And if you don't mind, please do so without improving my body. I'm so fudging sick of people trying to reduce my risk of heart attack and make me live longer. Just let me die. From Captain Cork, another about personal trainers. A personal trainer is not superior to you. Having expertise in movement, muscles, bodies, doesn't make us a better person, nor does it make us in charge of you or an expert of your body in life. It isn't your personal trainer's business to tell you how your body should move and when. You've literally just described a personal trainer's job. Move your body daily without the expectation of change and see how much more enjoyable exercise becomes. So, stagnation is enjoyable for you, is it? Just circling the drain until the inevitable happens? Gotcha. From Alfaba. Apricot thumbprint cookies. I do not deny myself pleasures. If cookies are to become hips and thighs, let my body be made of Kerrygold. Rapadura. Homemade bourbon vanilla extract. 
Let my thighs unfold thy crushed velvet and silk blankets, enveloping my lovers in sensual security. The point of life is to live well, is to die well. Longevity in and of itself is a pitiful pursuit. When I center my experience as both black and female, in my position within this empire, I sink into the back of the great turtle and ask, what is for her to bear our weight? What is for her to be mined and disregarded, to have her being negated by a science that denies her innate subjectivity? She tells me that this is but the work. She tells me of the pleasures of the ways lapping against her shorelines. She tells me of the sweet sensations of manicure brown feet making nice with the ground known as her back, and that she carries the weight of this empire with grace. I take my cookies into my body, knowing the sacrifice of the grain mothers, the cow mothers, and the cane mothers. I take my cookies into my body, feeling into the joy and delight of what we have crafted with love. I release my body with the restraint of fixing, and I adorn myself in my spacious winter clothing. It's a cookie, Elfaba. From Dorkita, poor kid. Can we chat about kids? My son is almost 13 and he has gained a significant amount of weight this year. My hubby is very upset by this. I've been trying to be relaxed about it, reminding myself and hubby that the kid is growing. I'm only a few weeks into intuitive eating, so I feel like I don't have a handle on how to help us all in a positive way. My son is not an active kid, especially since he has not been able to do Taekwondo since last March. I don't want to have body image junk projected onto him at such a young age. Depressed face. Someone replies, We're in a pandemic. Smile. He is going through puberty. Everyone has had their lives changed. His weight is so irrelevant and your husband is doing more harm than he realizes. Please protect your son or an eating disorder and mental health issues await. Sola de Timi gives a rather serious response. Long time lurker, but I feel compelled to comment because parents should always be concerned about rapid weight gain in kids. For me, I started using food to cope with abuse that was happening outside of the home and gained a significant amount of weight in a short time. Aside from the health risks of childhood obesity and our increased sedentary lifestyle during the pandemic, if your kid gains a lot of weight in a short amount of time, alarm bells should be ringing. As a parent myself, I should add, assuming there's no mental problems going on, it's very easy to control your kids' foods by simply not buying junk at the grocery store and not allowing them to buy junk when they're out. They can save their money for more important things. You don't have to bring up appearance at all to change their diet. From N.A. Intuitive eating parent wants to know whether health guidelines for babies are restriction. More about parent stuff. The AAP says no added sugar before two years old, and I'm following that. Is that considered restriction? He's only nine months old, so he doesn't realize he's being denied sugar. I assume it's fine, but it does feel weird having to constantly check nutrition labels for him. Yes, yes, not giving baby sugar is restriction makes sense. That intuitive eating echo chamber you joined on Facebook is right. Not those evil, human-hating doctors, nurses, and scientists. From Jen's late again, she can't fathom that another country doesn't want to have to pay to deal with her future medical issues. It was so incredibly frustrating to undergo additional testing because I couldn't believe that someone so fat was metabolically healthy. A few weeks later, I received the decision from immigration that I was denied residency because I did not meet the medical standard required. Based solely on my BMI, all of my medical tests have been good. Nothing raised any flags or fell outside of the normal parameters. You know, if we ignore BMI... All of my medical tests have been good. Nothing raised any flags. Except the BMI. Or fell outside of normal parameters. But my BMI was over 30, so nothing else apparently mattered. And the belief that because of my BMI, I would end up costing up to $25,000 in medical care costs during my time in New Zealand. Curse you, actuaries! Being denied residency based on my BMI was one of the most embarrassing things that had ever happened in my life. I mentioned this to a friend while the ordeal was dragging on, and she suggested that there was nothing to be embarrassed about. This was them showing their ignorance. While I appreciated her support and reframing of the event, it did nothing to lessen my mortification that I had been deemed too fat to stay in New Zealand. Wait a second. 
how could they not want someone to move into their country who's going to be a massive burden on their healthcare system? So unfair. You should write to Amnesty International. From Thumbelina. Sure, Jan. I really dislike the term overweight. Over what weight? For the weight that the oppressive paradigm of diet culture deems acceptable, or perhaps over the weight that socially constructed beauty and thin ideals have dictated? I'm confused. I can't tell if this is a dumb joke or a dumb person. It's defined by your BMI. From Anxiety Logic. Lol, being a butt trench to people for no reason is so hilarious. My boss was talking about how he's intermittent fasting, and I said sarcastically, Well, now it's cool and trendy, but when I was doing it, they called it an eating disorder. And my partner cracked up, but my boss didn't know what to say. And I'd say the look on his face was priceless as he realized the similarities. Domastsen. Or... The boss had second thoughts about who he hired. From Alfie Billy. Want to become a member of this super inclusive support group? All you need to join is $300 and a host's approval that you are indeed fat enough. Fat Liberation Support Group. An online group for fat people seeking community and support. Join us. Cost $300. US Contact us for equity pricing options. This group is for you. If you are small, fat, or above, ask us if you're not sure. You want support navigating life in a fat body. You're craving fat community. You have a decent grasp of basic HAES concepts. You are not actively dealing with eating disorder symptoms. OCR Amazon. $300? Yeah, but big diet is a capitalist scam. Scornhart. $300 every three months. Money well spent, I'm sure. From Elmir 2000. People on larger bodies do not necessarily eat more than their smaller counterparts. Ah, comforting ourselves with lies now, are we? PSA. There is not a thin person inside every body just waiting to get out. Body diversity is real and needs to be normalized. This is a completely misguided and inaccurate belief. Research supports body diversity. Our body size is primarily determined by genetics and is largely out of our control. Sure. Genetics controls your height, your frame, your shoe size, mostly. It doesn't make your BMI 50. From Cookie Monster Eats Me. They did the science. Reddit is super pro-science. Until you mention that all scientific evidence points to weight loss being near impossible to maintain long term. Then they all freak the fudge out and start denying the evidence. Someone replied, or if you say that you can be healthy and fat, apparently that's not possible according to them. Someone else, yeah, the vitriol that emerges when you mention that. It's unbelievable how personally they take it. It just makes me want to say, buddy, you might not believe in science, but science believes in you. Someone from a deleted account replied, Yeah, Reddit really denies the truth with long-term weight loss being impossible with subs like r slash lose it, and there are hundreds of documented examples of long-term weight loss. El San Bravado added, r slash progress picks doesn't fit the narrative. From Osa Osa Osa, gaining weight and returning to the HAES echo chamber. I've been doing intuitive eating for four months now, and I feel like I'm close to the end of my refeeding stage. I've had major relationship weight gain over the past two years, 80 pounds prior to intuitive eating. I'm short was already in a larger body prior to the gain. Wedding dress shopping was tough, but I found a dress I really liked. My maid of honor sent me a pic of it, and I realized how large my body had gotten, and I was shocked! I love the dress in the mirror, though so I was able to get past the unflattering photos. Well, now I've taken expensive engagement pics with a great photographer, I was nervous, but I had high hopes because he's a professional and there's no way the pics could be bad, right? Well, I got a sneak peek and I'm totally devastated. I'm completely unrecognizable and my commitment to intuitive eating has not been shaken like this before. I plan on seeing an intuitive eating counselor soon, but ugh, photos are tough. Not looking forward to taking pics at my wedding, sad face. My ah, babe. I feel sorry for her, but Lollipop, what was the photographer supposed to do as a professional? Photoshop her pics? I hope she stops intuitive eating and gets proper nutritional help she clearly needs. Goes her destructor. Was the photographer a professional, or was he merely in a professional photographer body? Maybe that was her mistake. Rocks Kijo. Maybe he hasn't mastered his intuitive picture-taking yet. From Margot LaRue. Everything other people post is about me! 
I am not a before photo. Fat logicians often say, I'm not fat, I have fat. Applied here, they aren't a before photo, they have a before photo. Well, I guess someone else does, but that kind of ruins the joke. Mutt Fitness, over explaining jokes that barely work since 1975. Everknowing posted, this person wants to get rid of gyms because they're fat phobic and replace them with gyms. Gym culture can be absolutely toxic and it's obvious they've had a bad experience, but what are they even saying? Get rid of gyms, bro. Nobody should have to pay to move their bodies. Gym culture is all types of fudged up. Gym spaces are literally horrible for most if not all marginalized people. I'm way more invested in community movement and spaces. Spaces where people feel comfortable moving their bodies freely how they want, when they want. Spaces that are about healing and health and not weight loss focused. Gyms are just not good for folks health. I'm high so I might circle back to this but fudge it. When I say movement spaces for communities I mean free classes for all levels of movement and people. Spaces that aren't just focusing on moving, but mental health. A place that's not about weight loss. Groups of people moving their bodies how they enjoy together, or alone. This person is like the boss who's never done the job, has never even been to your office, but still calls you on the phone to tell you you're doing it wrong, and they could do a way better job, and by the way, here's how you should do your job. From No Need. They are 300 pounds and prefer taking a cocktail of drugs to modifying their diet at all. I have a massive sweet tooth. In the last two days, I've eaten an entire package of cookie dough. When I say minimal, I mean minimal. I will not be miserable. I put a lowest sugar something in my stomach within 20 minutes of taking both doses of metformin. That's a medication you use for diabetes, by the way. Greek yogurt, not plain, that's gross. Oatmeal, again, not plain. Favor the instant variety. Or just a peanut butter sandwich on wheat bread are good. When I go on a sugar binge, I put an hour between servings to see how it sits on the belly. If it seems alright, I go for it. I have purposefully not restricted any food in any amount. It's all good and it's all loud, pending the response of my stomach. I have, however, tried to add things to my diet that I wasn't eating as much of. Fruits, veggies, and fish in particular. I cook whatever I want in butter. But I do try to be intentional in adding more green stuff even if I feel like eating a couple of pieces of cheesecake after. Sugar binge? Are you trying to lose a foot? Because this is how you lose a foot, Blana. From Always Tacos. This is Rich, coming from someone who in a separate thread was complaining that they can't keep up with people just walking out and about. I've done every overweight test in the book, A1C tests, blood pressure, lipids, you name it. They've all not just come back normal but not even close to being on the border of high. I eat vegetables regularly. I have a mostly balanced diet. This pandemic has sort of changed that. Weight is often not an indicator of overall health and definitely not something doctors and backseat doctors should harp on. I understand that people are primed to think that, but remember that thin people aren't free from health issues because they look like society likes. Does weight make some things harder? Of course. My knees experience more pressure. My ankles have more pressure. I just want to hit home that just because someone is overweight doesn't mean they have a plethora of medical issues due to their being overweight. My rebuttal, and sorry for its extreme length. Yet. From Big Mountain, Little Me. Pack it in, folks. BMI is useless. Fitness more important than fatness. Some facts. You can have BMI over 25 and be perfectly healthy. The BMI scale is a poor tool, also known as buttercream measuring index. Weight loss does not guarantee better health. Fitness is more important than fatness. While there may be some use for BMI at the extreme ends, especially with BMIs less than 18, most people's BMI tells us very little about their health. Uh, wait a second. You're basically saying that you can be too skinny, but an overweight BMI doesn't affect health. Please display your medical degree in the papers you co-wrote proving this. What? You don't have either? I'm shocked! SHOCKED! From Dorkita. Now even some PE teachers think BMI is buttercream. I'm so frustrated. I'm a PE teacher, but I coach cheerleading, swim, track, and volleyballs. So because of COVID this year, 
there has been a lot of paperwork and extra regulations from out country and state in order to get after school sports running. I've been working on getting my cheerleaders cleared by the doctor. Space period. So among lots of other paperwork, space colon, student athlete have to have a current physical and they submit an update health form. The doctor clears them. Well, this year, I got a list saying that a high BMI puts my teenage girls in a high risk category for the virus. And now each girl that has a high BMI has to call the doctor and ask for an additional clearance in order to participate in cheerleading, space period. I work so hard to get my girls to be confident in their skin and body and educate them about the faults of BMI. And now this additional step is required. The disappointment in the county public officials is high, space exclamation point. I understand you not wanting to stress appearance with your athletes, but that does not mean that a high BMI is healthy. My disappointment in you is high. From a shamed grape, trying to save obese and overweight people from fatal diseases is fat phobic. Someone wrote, hot take, body positivity is dangerous. We shouldn't be telling people it's okay to be overweight when heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. Someone replied, not impressed emoji. This is fat phobia. What does body positivity have to do with heart disease actually? Your body size alone doesn't indicate heart disease. This is the sort of dangerous rhetoric that causes doctors to tell fat people to just lose weight instead of taking their health issues seriously. This is so stupid. I'm reasonably certain that if you want to prevent heart disease, the number one thing you can do is to get your BMI into a healthy range. You heard the stupidity here, folks, and now you can't unhear it. From Morbid Corvid Finch. Well, what in the devil's food cake is obesity caused by then? And how is it not unhealthy? I just learned something new about myself. Apparently I can't be snickered to keep following blogs that assume that being obese is due to overeating, or that overeating inevitably causes obesity, and that being obese is intrinsically less healthy than being thin, even if the primary message is an anti-dieting one. I'm good at this, healthy at every size, and intuitive eating and fat liberation forever. Effing furious. So, you've learned to stick your fingers in your ears and scream, Nya, nya, I can't hear you. Congratulations. You're a toddler. From Dorkita. No such thing as a healthy weight. Someone asks, How do you know what your healthy weight is? Someone replies, I don't think there is such a thing. Shrug. I think more in terms of set point. When I'm listening to my body and not trying to beat it into submission, where does it land? What weight can I maintain without manipulating my food and exercise? I'm an adult. Literally every time I eat, I'm manipulating my diet. And every time I move, or don't, I'm manipulating my exercise. No beating myself into submission required. From Miss Beaver. It's okay if you're too fat to be able to easily put on socks and shoes. There are some things that are harder to do on a fat body, and that doesn't mean that weight loss is the solution. A thread. Likely, because of weight stigma and the fear that acknowledging that anything is harder in a fat body will result in weight loss recommendations, we don't talk about this enough, in my opinion. But truth is, there are some things that are harder in a fat body, just like there are some things that are harder in a short body or a tall body, but we don't suggest getting taller or shorter. As an example, it's harder to put my shoes and socks on in a fat body than it has been when I've been in a smaller body. There are parts of my body that are just harder to reach. Please don't tell me all the different parts of your body that are hard to reach. TMI. I wonder how different it would be if we approached these moments without judgment and could imagine how we would respond if anti-fat bias didn't exist. Minus anti-fat bias, we would figure out ways to accommodate our body's needs without judgment. We would get the tools we need, the assistive devices, and ask for help from those around. My kids are awesome at zipping and unzipping my boots. Why am I not surprised she's making her kids do something she should be able to do herself? Is it annoying to figure out ways to do things that might be easier if my body was smaller? Of course. It's also annoying to put my contacts in every morning. It would be easier if I didn't need them. But no one judges me about needing contacts. In summary, there are some things that are harder to do in a fat body. There are some things that are harder to do in all kinds of bodies. We need to talk about this more so that other fat people don't think there's something wrong with their body. We need to normalize what it means to have a body. I think we've already normalized what it means to have a body. And specifically a fat body. And whatever your needs are in your fat body, 
Weight loss is not the answer. But what if your need is to be able to live as long as someone at a normal BMI? From Teensy Duino. Apparently, if you're fat, you're always going to be fat because that's how nature works. It's a conversation between two people. I do have one question for you. If someone is part of the body positivity movement, who has higher body fat, but loving themselves helps them build better habits and eventually they become thin, does that mean body positivity is no longer for them? The literal point of body positivity is marginalized bodies. How oh, cute, you're assuming high body fat people don't love themselves and have good habits. Lol, they won't eventually become thin. Body diversity exists. In every species, this is what I'm talking about. That's not what I said. I'm a fat triathlete. I'm going to be fat because that's how my body is. Fat people aren't thin people trapped in fat bodies. They're just naturally fat. <laughs> why don't you understand? That is why you're dangerous. Side note. How much would you have to eat per day to maintain being obese while training for a triathlon? Between biking 100 miles, running a marathon, and swimming, what is it, half a mile? You've easily burned one whole pound of fat every time you do a triathlon. And the training would be about 1,000 to 2,000 calories a day. You would need to eat like 4,000 calories a day to stay obese while training for a triathlon. I don't understand it. But let's continue. So no person of higher body fat has ever become thin? 5%. Oh, that statistic is incorrect, but let's say it's true for argument's sake. What about those 5% then? We're not thin people trapped in fat. Good for them. They were probably supposed to be thin. Oh, okay. But is body positivity for them or no? No. Okay, thank you. What do they need it for? So to summarize, once you feel positive about your body, you can't be in the body positivity club anymore. It's literally a club that kicks out people who succeed. Could you imagine if Alcoholics Anonymous was like that? Oh, you didn't drink this week? You're out of the club. Donut Jackowo. Being ridiculed in a body positivity group for asking them for advice on how to be body positive. I once joined a so-called body positivity group on Discord, and after looking for a while, I decided to ask them how bad my self-harm scars were. They're on my thighs, and they are still visible. Other people tell me they're not that bad, but I think they're terrible. Anyway, I asked them to be brutally honest, and all they did was yell. It was in voice chat, and insult me because I'm a really small guy. 1.63 meters and 60 kilograms. That is 5 foot 3 and 132 pounds. They told me I had no place in body positivity with my so-called eating disorder that starts with the letter A, but I used to have that eating disorder that starts with the letter A but I've been gradually gaining weight again, so that I'm now a healthy weight. But dang, some people in their body positivity is really just being positive to their own body. Krotha does the math for us. 1.63 meters and 60 kilograms gives him a BMI of 22.6. Like, that's nicely in the middle of the normal weight range. That makes it worse, if it even could be worse, as they are not only insulting someone about their body in a body positive group, but are saying he has that eating disorder that starts with the letter A while he isn't even at a low weight. Body positive only as long as you're fat enough, it seems. From Registered Nurse Night Gaming. Found this in one of my mother's WhatsApp group. Eat whatever you like because the inventor of the sports treadmill has died at the age of 54. The inventor of gymnastics died at the age of 57. The world bodybuilding champion has died at the age of 41. The best footballer in the world, Maradona, died at the age of 60. Now, KFC's inventor dies at 94. The inventor of Nutella died at the age of 88. The inventor of Turkish Shurma and Steak died at the age of 104. The inventor and cigarette maker Winston has died at the age of 102. The inventor of opium died at the age of 116 in an earthquake. Hennessy whiskey inventor died at 98. The inventors of Afghani food, Kabeli, Manto, and Chapeli Kebab, are still alive. How did these doctors come to the conclusion that exercise prolongs life? The rabbit is always lively and lives for two years, but the turtle that does not get salty from its place is 400 years old. So, keep rest, eat, drink, and enjoy till the end of the world. Ultrafab, this is just... wow. It's hilarious that they think the people who invented KFC and Nutella lived on a diet consisting of only KFC and Nutella. 
Let's add to that the fact that they think gymnastics was invented recently. That someone invented opium. That Afghani food was invented. I mean, really, did the person who write this even read what they wrote? From Love Dove Bunny. Doesn't want to decrease weight for sleep apnea. Hi friends, I received a diagnosis of sleep apnea today. I'm a bit rocked, anticipating how much intentional weight loss talk I will be hearing from doctors. Could use some support. Also, does anyone use one of the mouth guards for sleep apnea? Someone replies, I know three people who are in small bodies and have sleep apnea. We can start there, smiley emoji. None of them are told to lose weight or change their diet. You're surprised that none of the thin people you know were told to lose weight. Are you the stupid? From Elmere 2000. Once again, Karen, a diet is whatever you eat. Rolling eyes. Counting calories, macros, and points, even on maintenance or reverse numbers, is still a diet. This is a form of restriction that keeps us fixated on food and our bodies. Kangaroo. I guess grocery shopping and cooking must be a form of restriction too, then. Fuzzy Blue Pillow. I can't buy everything in the whole store! It's money-phobic! Or something. From Dorkita. Magnificent advice. Trigger warning. Food rules. Food labeling. Hey all! Finally took the plunge, went all in, and took all the rules away. I was practicing what I thought was intuitive eating for almost a year, but was really the hunger fullness diet with some rules attached that I couldn't shake. While I'm excited to finally feel like I'm making progress, my GI system is not. I'm eating more often and more packaged processed foods than I have in a long time, and started noticing digestive issues. Too much information, constipation, gassiness, a heavy bloated feeling in my stomach. I feel like I'm at a crossroads. All the foods I know would help. Whole grains, veggies, yogurt, do not sound appealing at all right now. For people who have gotten past the initial no food rules phase, how should I look at this? I know if I eat foods that are good for digestion, it would help, but then I wouldn't be following my cravings, and I'm afraid that I'm going to slip back into old diet rules. Anyone else experience this? Does your GI system get with the program eventually? I wonder if it would be worth meeting with my intuitive eating based dietitian, or if that too could send me into old habits when I'm finally starting to make headway in my mindset toward all foods. I don't feel like I'm ready to implement the gentle nutrition phase just yet. Someone replies, Personally, I went through that phase for a while. Your digestive system is healing. I would keep allowing all foods and add in things that will help the discomfort. I used apple cider vinegar and ginger supplements to help during this phase. After a lot of dieting, your digestive system isn't used to the new foods, so it has to get used to it. Keep going! Skated to the rafters replies, Keep eating food that makes you feel like a slug. Feeling horrible is not a red flag. It's a sign of healing. Love Dove Bunny brings us. Not watching show because an actress lost weight. Original post. Queen Latifah is in a new CBS show called The Equalizer. It appears as if Queen Latifah has lost a lot of weight. She was one of my role models of successful, strong, fat women in the media. Now I'm not sure I want to watch the show. Clarification. The reason I'm not sure I want to watch the show is not because of her weight loss. It's a trigger for me about societal pressure and diet culture. So it's about her weight loss. Queen Latifah is an amazing actor and her size has nothing to do with that. I will probably watch the show because it has a strong female lead, but I have to get over my own issues with diet culture. Kelly Mogwa replied, I really, really fudging hate these FAs that depend on black women staying fat. We are not your fat, sassy black friends. FAs. Shoe pastry. Anxiolytic tea. It reminds me of that video Michelle McDaniels had about white feminists saying she's not black enough because she doesn't fit their narrative. Last time I saw, some white feminist got her video taken down. Anyone know what video that was? Feel free to give the title or a link below. From Onoyo. Of course, everybody fakes being happy. Actually sad to see this level of brainwashing. Are fitness diet people actually happy? From everything I've read and all the research I've done on intuitive eating and HAES so far, I've come to the conclusion that dieting is bad 99.99% .99 of the time, and it often can result in weight gain and other bad things. Also, I've heard a lot of people saying that forcing yourself to exercise when you don't want to, and overexercising can be very harmful. I have a lot of friends who are into fitness, and they all follow fitness people. All the fitness YouTubers and influencers I see are always smiling showing off their healthy food and stuff. I know it's social media, but they always seem to be happy. So do my friends! 
Are they actually happy while dieting and exercising so hard every day? I thought diets caused so many bad things. I'm just really confused, thanks. Putting healthy food in your body and getting a good amount of exercise makes your mood better? How is this possible? The Pop Diet book I got says all I have to do is eat eight donuts a day and lay on the couch and I'll be happy. From Dorkita, Fat Lack of Logic. So I actually think of this fairly often. Food is a basic need, right? But it's the only basic need that you can be shamed for having too much of. You have never heard these words. Janet, you have three houses, you are over sheltered. What, you couldn't stop at one? Where is your self-control? Look, if you owned three houses and don't give a ton to charity every year, we're not gonna be friends. From Olivia Olive. I'd listen to the doctor in this situation and how is a toddler mostly muscle? My son's pediatrician made a point of telling me he's really heavy for his weight. Really heavy for his weight? What, like a ton of feathers? There is literally no chance she said that. He's really heavy for his weight. You might want to watch his portions and maybe stick to 1% milk because this puts him at risk of being obese later in life. He's 18 months old. She seriously wants me to count calories for my toddler who is basically a self-imposed vegetarian and besides running around all day and every day is also strong enough to do pull-ups. Like, the kid is in all seriousness mostly muscle and eats healthier than ever I have. You know, it's tough to hear that you are screwing up as a parent. Well, suck it up, buttercup. From Tin Tin Uviel. I have a hard time imagining indigenous people being 500 pounds, though. Being ashamed of your body and being fat phobic are both symptoms of settler colonialism. We all really think indigenous people didn't celebrate every body shape and size? Sweetie, our ancestors were bathing in the rivers and lakes and most definitely having sex in the open, rolling eyes. Big and fluffy. This is just perversion of indigenous people into some likable, cool, better than everyone else ideal. That honestly just dehumanizes them. Indigenous people are people. They aren't your spiritual icons. From Facepalm, same idea. Kathleen Meehan tweets, Fellow white dietitians, please stop saying the Mediterranean diet is the healthiest way to eat. This upholds white supremacy. I'm rolling my eyes. Some diet is going to be the healthiest. The people who will eat that diet will have a race. Saying that that diet is the best is not racist. From Mental Skillness. Posted by someone in my family. I don't even know where to begin. By the way, I've deleted the racism from this post because it is bad enough without it. I love this doctor. Scratching chin, smiling. Doctor, I've heard that cardiovascular exercise can prolong life. Is this true? Heart only good for so many beats and that's it. Don't waste time on exercise. Everything wear out eventually. Speeding up heart not make you live longer. It's like seeing you extend life of car by driving faster. Want to live longer? Take nap. Should I reduce my alcohol intake? Oh no, wine made from fruit. Fruit very good. Brandy distilled wine. That means they take water out of fruity bit. So you get even more goodness that way. Beer also made of grain. Grain good too, bottoms up. What are some of the advantages of participating in regular exercise program? Can't think of one, sorry. My philosophy, no pain, good. Aren't fried foods bad for you? You not listening. Food fried in vegetable oil. How getting more vegetable be bad? How about chocolate? You crazy? Hello, cocoa bean, another vegetable. It best feel good food around. Is swimming good for your figure? If swimming good for your figure, explain whale to me. Is getting in shape important for my lifestyle? Hey, rotund is also a shape. Well, I hope this cleared up any misconceptions you may have had about food and diets. And remember, finally, the doctor summed up. Look, mister, life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in an attractive and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in sideways, beer in one hand, chocolate in the other, Body thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and screaming, Woohoo, what a ride my life was! Ha 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 I wish this was a parody. But after 15 years on the internet, I just know some people are posting it unironically. I know I deleted all the racism, but what was with the racism in it if it's just a parody? From Cassis Oolong, Blood Type Diet. 
I totally support the blood type diet. I have eaten based on the O plan and lost weight by avoiding foods that it's said to avoid. Now I've gone back to ton of cruciferous veggies and eating little protein, etc. And gaining weight while eating 1400 healthy calories a day and walking up to two miles a day. And I'm still gaining. I believe less protein is my problem. For the old blood type, which I have, it was amazing which foods that I should eat were the foods that I gravitated to as a child and growing up to adulthood. Always wondered why I like soda water, etc. I would encourage people to read about it because I believe that they will be surprised. Haggle poise. Another one that has no idea what amount of exercise is normal to. Walk two miles a day? We are in the presence of an Olympic god. From Kvitlak. Sicko isn't the standard anymore. Research says that set weight is the standard. That's not true. University classes this year are teaching in textbook and lectures that BMI is inaccurate. It's a useless measurement, and they are currently phasing it out. We know weight is caused by multiple factors, including genetics. Sicko isn't the standard anymore. Research says that set weight is the standard. Everyone is different. Update your education. You'll be surprised to learn that your knowledge is outdated and wrong. This post from Stuff Mom Groups say, sum up my thoughts on that. When someone says, I did my own research, what they mean to say is, I watched someone else's sugary YouTube video. From Horseshoe Crab, Sanity, thought this was a great comparison. If someone has issues managing their finances, no one mocks that person for setting a budget and monitoring their spending. No one says, just spend in a way that feels natural. Intuit what it feels like you need to spend. If you get into debt, even serious debt, lesson learned and you can work your way back out. But that's often the message given to people struggling with food intake habits by those promoting intuitive eating. Sometimes we need guidance and structure. Moral Talk replied, It's even worse than lesson learned and you can work your way back out. An intuitive spender would say this is the amount of debt you're meant to have and that any attempt to get out of debt is doomed to fail. Jesus Lover Actually, I know people like this. I was kind of raised this way too. You'll be paying bills your whole life no matter what, so you might as well use credit cards to have cool things that make you happy. From Not The Onion There was a segment on the TV show that said, Nutritionist says pizza is better for breakfast than most cereals. Way to set the bar super high, guys. Better for you than corn puffs drowning in sugar. Amazing! And now, the chonkers. We start with a post from Impervious HP. It's an orange cat with dark orange stripes and a white belly. In the first post, he's standing on a cat post, but he's a little bit chonky. In the second post, he looks like he's at a healthy weight and he's strolling toward the camera. One year difference. Finally decided to buy Tusuk, the expensive food. Follow the weight loss instructions and ignore the demanding meows. He's much healthier and active now. From the worst brought. It's a couple of black cats. It's hard to tell which is which because they are literally just black cats. There's five different pictures of them. Uh, and some they're chubby and some they're wearing shirts and are leaner. But it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. Dechonk rechonk of my late middle age BBS. From Fresh Cookies in Space. It's a gray stripy cat with a white belly and green eyes. This is Tigger and he's about 20 pounds. Advice is very much wanted. Talk to your vet. That's what they're there for. From Roo Roo Rawr. It's a giant white cat with a big black splotch on his back. And he kind of looks like he's wearing a black helmet. In both pictures, he's just laying around on various things. He's about as big as I imagine Pusheen looks in real life. Knuckles has lost 2.5 pounds. Still looks chunky in photos though. Diet info in comments. Inhuman Superhuman brings us a white dog with kind of gray spots all over. And he's got a black patch over one eye. I couldn't tell you what breed it is. It sort of looks like the junkyard equivalent of a Dalmatian. In the first picture, he's sitting in the back of a car and a little bit chunky. In the second picture, he's sitting in the front seat and looking healthy weight. Riley has definitely gotten less chunky with better food and more playtime. September 2020 to February 2021. From Devon Renee. It's a cat that's kind of orange or gray depending on the lighting and the way he's sitting. In the first picture, he's sitting in the windowsill looking kind of chubby. In the later pictures, he looks thinner. About six months different, Vinny is looking much healthier and is no longer completely obsessed with food. He used to gorge himself at feeding time and make himself sick. I wonder what that was about. Maybe his food wasn't very satisfying. 
Do they sell cat junk food? From Mademoiselle Macabre. This is one of those cats that's orange and brown randomly all throughout his body. Two pictures of him laying on a red bed. One picture of him laying on a blue bed. And one picture of him just laying around outside. And all of them, he looks kind of chunky. I present you Mimine. She's 13 years old, and we put her on a diet for a year and a half. Here's her progress. Now she's able to sleep on her back. From Wooden Extension. It's a great cat with dark gray stripes and green eyes. He's looking directly at the camera. Attempting to de-chonk. He refuses. How does that work? Is he stealing food from someone else? From My Cat's Name is Stilly. It's mostly a white cat, but it has a few stripes and brown spots here and there. I don't think I've seen one like it before. It kind of looks like two cats were randomly put together. In the first picture, he's really chunky, and in the second picture, he looks like he's at a healthy weight. With scheduled feeding and proper portion control, Tilly is a healthy girl again. From Pootie Targ, it's a light orange cat with darker orange stripes. In both pictures, he looks like he's kind of mad or disappointed in you, like he's thinking about taking revenge. In the first picture, he's very chunky, and in the second picture, he looks like he's at a healthy weight. Trim Spa, baby! From Smoothest Jazz. It's a black cat with a little white spot near its neck. He's laying down with a bunch of toys and looks like he's about to attack something. Update on my dechonking journey with Ash. Down from 14.9 pounds to 13.7 in just over a month. Thank you for advice and I'll keep everyone updated when he's at his healthy weight.